get the best of both worlds. The fastest reflexes modern technology has to offer onboard computer assisted memory and a lifetime of on the street law enforcement programming. It is my great pleasure to present to you Robocop. One of my favorite movies of all time is RoboCop, an over-the-top action flick, a satire of Reagan-era corporatism, I'd buy that for a dollar. and the story of a man finding out his resurrection comes at the cost of his own free will. You're our product, and we can't very well have our products turning against us, can we? Wait. Enhance. Thank you for your cooperation. Oh boy, here's another video bashing on a remake. What's it gonna regurgitate for the gazillionth time? Hey, I never said I didn't like the remake. Both these movies were made in different eras. The original is like Rambo and Commando and other action movies of its time, while the remake is more like Law & Order, NCIS, and other police procedurals that sprang up in the late 90s and early aughts. Even the media satire is updated from 1987's wacky infomercials That's it, Buster. No more military aid. to Sam Jackson playing a loudmouth talk show host. Now, I know some of you may think that this kind of thinking is dangerous and these machines violate your civil liberties. Stop whining! Stop whining! Stop whining! Stop whining! The gore isn't as amped up in the remake, but it looks so out of place in the more grounded 2014 Detroit. The original was a cartoon, so the over-the-top violence fit within that world. Although, there is one scene that shows this movie isn't afraid to confront certain realities. No. Holy Christ. Holy Christ. Holy Christ, there's nothing left. The original was about the dangers of letting corporations control your life. And this movie is no different. But the way they go about this theme is different. When I think of the original, the first word I think of is control. When I think of the remake, the word that comes to mind is willpower. Alex Murphy is dead in the original and resurrected as Robocop, having to regain his humanity slowly over the course of the movie. In the remake, Alex Murphy's life is saved by becoming Robocop and remains very human, spending the rest of the movie resisting his increasingly controlling, mindless robotic programming. It does take longer to get to Robocop in the remake, but that's because we need to know Alex in the remake. It's important to see when he's human. That way we know when he's not acting like himself. In the case of the original, you could argue that maybe the movie should have started with Robocop on the streets, then we see him put everything together. In the remake, it's explained that Murphy's agility and machine precision is based on the idea of the illusion of free will. The system releases signals into Alex's brain, making him think he's doing what our computers are actually doing. I mean, Alex believes right now he is in control. But he's not. It, it's the illusion of free will. But this concept is not limited to just Murphy himself. It ties in nicely with the social commentary on corporatism, where companies in some sense give us the illusion of free will to buy their product through advertising. You're done. Mm. But it's ultimately revealed to be a farce. OCP messes with his brain chemistry, lowering his dopamine levels, his ability to feel, so that he can handle the criminal data bank of the Detroit Police Department. They mess with him so he can be a more efficient product. Alex, how do you feel? I feel fine, Dr. Norton. 
Omnicorp or OCP or overall cretinous puke farts has different goals between the remake and the original. In the original, the police project is meant to clear the way in old Detroit for the privately owned Delta City, 100% run by OCP after running all sorts of other businesses in other fields. Take a close look at the track record of this company and you'll see that we have gambled in markets traditionally regarded as non-profit. Hospitals, prisons, space exploration. I say good business is where you find it. Within their ranks, there's a cutthroat corporate climate that makes them all come across as extremely callous, indifferent, and sometimes more robotic than the robot cops themselves. Too bad about Kenny, huh? It's life in the big city. The whole reason why RoboCop was funded in the first place is because Bob Morton took advantage of Dick Jones's failure with Ed 209. Your temporary setback could cost us $50 million in interest payments alone. Not necessarily, sir. Perhaps you're aware of the RoboCop program developed by myself at Security Concepts as a contingency against just this sort of thing? In response... I had to kill Bob Morton because he made a mistake. Now it's time to erase that mistake. With the remake, OCP is more grounded, filled with people who aren't nearly as caricatured. Ask you, come on, can you help me? Just get him to do that. Here, their main motivation for starting the RoboCop project, Hubert Dreyfus, whose bill prohibits the use of drones on U.S. soil. It's so popular that no amount of money will get politicians to vote differently, but cyborg police aren't off the table, and putting a man inside a machine would lead to the repeal of the Dreyfus Act as the public becomes more comfortable with the prospect of more private, militaristic robot police. That was just one system in place. We've cut crime by 80%. Just imagine if we put I don't know, let's say a hundred systems in place. To keep RoboCop a robot, a product, they make sure he can't visit his wife and child. Don't be fooled by their less cartoonish demeanor. They're just as soulless as before. We have to get him up there now. What do you want me to do? I don't know. Fix him. Do what you have to do. Your reputation is on the line every bit as much as ours. However, when Alex starts to go off on his own, Sellers tries to have him killed to seal the deal on the repeal vote, with Murphy as a martyr so that they can have Ed 209s roaming the streets. Every product exists for the next product. Once again, OCP uses the idea of the illusion of free will to get Americans to buy into their agenda. Omnicorp, we've got the future under control. However, not everyone involved with OCP has malicious intentions. Like Dr. Dennett Norton, the one who did the operation that turned Alex into RoboCop in the first place. The one who came up with the idea of the illusion of free will. The scenes where it's just Murphy and him trying to get this all under control are fantastic. There's a real Frankenstein monster relationship between the two. Norton is simultaneously proud of what he's achieved, but he also feels massive guilt towards what he put Alex through to appease Sellers. This takes the place of his partner being the confidant in the original. And comparing them, I found the remake's dynamic much stronger. She loves you, and she gave you a second chance. I need you. To take it. In fact, I think this relationship is the core of the movie. More than the family, more than Keaton, this dynamic between the two is what it's all built on. Norton's trying to do the best he can within his circumstances, but ultimately he realizes he has to reject those circumstances outright. This has to stop! Here you have a man trying to skirt the line between the right thing and his job, till he decides to make the moral choice in the end, going against OCP, and testifying so that the Dreyfus Act isn't repealed. More to the point, OCP is not the only force working against Alex. Two detectives and the police chief work to set the bomb that maimed Murphy due to criminal corruption inside the Detroit Police Department. That's not to say, obviously, that there weren't non-OCP antagonists in the original, but the threats there felt like it was all coming from one singular source. The gangs, the police, every force against RoboCop found their origin at OCP. With all that said, the original's villains definitely have more charisma. Two words, Clarence 
Boddicker. Bitches leave. I will also say that the original's ending is much like the movie itself, cleaner and quicker to the point, working within the rules of the movie. But the remake ending shows more of his willpower overcoming his programming. Not only does he defeat Sellers, but his illusion of free will becomes free will alone. When looking at the two, personally, I prefer the original because it's a more clever, tighter, and cleaner story and has a direction that's just beyond iconic. But the remake's not without its own merits, being a more grounded and nuanced take on the story. And it all shows that Robocop wasn't a one-trick pony. It can be updated, adapted, serialized in a number of unique and interesting ways. I will find the criminal elements and bring them to justice. Tom's been stealing out the fridge again. No, I haven't. I know just the solution. Tom can't steal from the fridge if there's no fridge.